Hey y'all, welcome to Fusion 360's What's New for May. This month, I'm going to show you some awesome new features and workflows that let you dive deeper into augmented reality, some new surface analysis tools, and one feature that really changed my perspective. Let's dive in. For all of you simulation and analysis users out there, I think you're going to like this. Now, when you create a sweep in solid or surface modeling, or use patch or ruled surfaces, you'll see the analysis tab show up where you can select zebra, curvature, and iso curve. Augmented reality has been around for a while. Well, if you really want to walk down memory lane, it's been around for a long time in some form, but only the last 10 or so years with any real consequence. We as designers and engineers are hopeful that its use case continues to grow as fast as it has. Based on that and some actual hard proof, we're super excited to let y'all know that any Fusion 360 design can now be exported as a USDZ file format. USDZ is a file format created by Pixar for lots of their projects, but it's now supported by Apple, Nvidia, and loads of other tech stacks. What does that all mean to you? Well, lots. Now you can work with clients and show them what the design would look like in the space you're working in. Or if you're like me, you can use it to make sure you've got enough parking space for that next vehicle build. Just saying, the possibilities are endless. To use it, export your USDZ file format, and then using lots of different AR VR apps, you can upload the file to that service and see it via your chosen apps. If you've been following along for a while, you'll know that our sketch tools have been getting overhauled. This month sees text height now being editable via the parameters function. You know what? There's some truth in the whole thing of it's the little things that matter. Okay, I'm gonna leave you with the one update this month that got me super excited, auto scale. I know what you're thinking. You're saying, seriously? Yes, I am extremely serious. I mean it. You can't even begin to imagine how happy I was when I saw this. Sometimes it's the small things, or well, maybe the big things needed to be bigger or the small thing, whatever. When you do your first dimension, the canvas will auto scale to accommodate the size you're working in. For me, this is huge because I work from millimeters to inches to feet, depending on what I'm building. And having to reposition and reset orbits has always held me up. To use it, you have to enable it in the preferences space. In the top right corner, select preferences, navigate to the design portion and select enable auto scaling. Once you've done this, anytime you apply your first dimension to a sketch, it will auto scale the canvas to represent that space. Test it and then go do your happy dance. All right, y'all, that's it for this month's What's New for Design and Engineering. Oh, and don't forget to check out the new possible podcast where this month we talk with MIT's Space Exploration Initiative founder, Ariel Elkbau, and designer Seiwei Wang on how they're designing and building the future of space exploration in Fusion 360. And yes, everything they make gets sent to the space station for testing, so you don't want to miss it. Check out the description below for links on the What's New blog and where to listen. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date, and I'll catch you next time.